Hi everyone, Milan here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Dapper to query the database. I'm going to rewrite an existing example that was using Entity Framework Core, and we're going to replace it with Dapper and see how we can implement that. We're going to compare the performance between these two approaches and see how they stack up to each other. I'm starting out in the get member by ID query handler, where we are fetching the member from the database based on the member ID. In this implementation, we are using the member repository, which uses Entity Framework Core under the hood to talk with the database. So let's start the application and see what is the response time from the API for this implementation. And we're then going to replace this with Dapper and see how they stack up. I'm going to send the get request to fetch the member from the API from Postman. And I'm going to hit send a couple of times. After a few calls, we're going to consolidate and I think we can conclude that we get the response from the API in about 20 milliseconds. So let's rewrite our query handler using Dapper and see how it performs against our previous implementation. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install Dapper in the application project. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's browse for the Dapper NuGet package. Here's the NuGet package and let's go ahead and install it. And let's see how we can rewrite our get member by ID query handler to use Dapper. Dapper exposes a set of extension methods on the IDB connection interface, and one implementation of that interface that we can use is the SQL connection class. Let's get rid of the entire implementation here and start from scratch. I'm going to create a new SQL connection instance that I'm going to use to query the database using Dapper. You can see that I don't have access to the SQL connection class, which is because I'm missing an additional NuGet package. So let's go ahead and add that. If I type in SQL client, I'll get the Microsoft Data SQL client library. This library provides access to SQL Server, which is the database that I'm using in this project. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. Now, when I get back to the get member by ID query handler, you can see that I'm prompted to just reference the missing namespace. And now we have access to the SQL connection class. And to instantiate a new SQL connection, I need the connection string to our database. Instead of implementing this every time I need Dapper, I'm going to create an abstraction that is going to take care of creating a new SQL connection for me. So inside of the abstractions folder, I'm going to add a new interface. I'm going to call it I SQL connection factory. And this is what I'm going to be using to instantiate a new SQL connection when I need one. And inside of it, I'm just going to define one method, which is going to return a SQL connection. I'm going to call this method create connection. Now, when I go back to our get member by ID query handler, I need to inject the SQL connection factory. We can get rid of this old constructor here. So I'm going to completely remove it. And I'm going to add a new field that is going to hold our SQL connection factory. So I'm going to say private read only I SQL connection factory and inject it from the constructor. So now instead of instantiating a SQL connection every time manually, I can just say connection factory, create connection. And this is going to take care of giving me my SQL connection that I need. The SQL connection implements the iDisposable interface. So I suggest that you always define it inside of a using statement. And one interesting thing that you can do is you can also await this using statement because the SQL connection class also implements the I async disposable interface. All right, so we have the SQL connection. How do we query the database? Before I show you how to use Dapper, I'm going to need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I mentioned that Dapper exposes a set of extension methods on the IDB connection interface and SQL connection is an implementation of that interface. So let's see what kind of methods we have access to on the SQL connection. You can see that I get a bunch of extension methods here. I know that they are coming from Dapper because they require me to use the Dapper namespace. The one that we're going to be using is query first or default async. And I'm not going to be returning a member from the database. I'm going to return a member response directly. So I'm going to specify it as the generic argument here. And let's see what are the arguments for the query first or default method coming from Dapper. You can see that the first argument is the SQL query that we have to write manually. And then Dapper is going to execute that in the database and return our response. The second argument is an object 
representing any parameters that you may want to send to the database. We're definitely going to be using that to specify the member ID as a parameter. And then you can also specify a transaction if you have one. And for example, the comment timeout if you need something like that. So let's go ahead and write the SQL query that I want to execute on the database. I'm going to use an interpolated string because I want to write this query in multiple lines. Before I write the SQL query, I'm just going to quickly define a variable that is going to hold the result of this query. So I'm going to quickly add a member response variable. I need to await this call and I'm going to move this into a new line. Perfect. So now we need to write our SQL query. We obviously need a select statement here. So I'm going to start with that. And what do we actually need to select? If I go over to the member response definition to see what I have inside, you can see that this is actually a record and a positional record at that because it has a primary constructor defined. And we have four properties, the ID, email, first name, and last name. Because we are using a positional record for our member response, we have to return the columns from SQL in the same exact order that they are specified in this constructor. Otherwise, Dapper is not going to be able to map the response from SQL into our member response record. So if I go back to the get member by ID query handler, I need to select the ID, the email, the first name, and the last name. Now I need to specify where I need to select these values from. So I'm going to select these from the members table. So I'm going to say from members. And now I need to define a where statement to filter the members table based on the member ID that is specified in the query. So let's go ahead and do that. I need to say where ID equals, and I'm going to write member ID like this. This is how you can specify a SQL parameter using Dapper. If you recall, the second argument from this method was an object representing the parameters that Dapper is going to send to the database. And what's going to happen is I'm going to specify a value inside of that object, and that parameter is going to be replaced here when comparing to the member ID. So I need to define a second argument here, and I'm just going to use an anonymous object. I need to have an exact match to the name of the argument from the query, so I'm going to copy it. So let's define a new property, and I'm going to assign it a value of request member ID. If you are familiar with anonymous types, you know that we can omit the name of the property if the member that we are assigning the value from has the same name. So I'm going to get rid of this, and we're just going to define our parameters anonymous object like this. You can see that this is very straightforward. We just write a SQL statement, and we specify the parameters for this SQL statement in an anonymous object. I need to check if the member response is null and return an error result in that case. So I'm going to say if member response is null, we need to return a failure result in this case. So I'm going to say result failure member response, and I need to specify which error I want to use for the failure result. So I'm going to say domain errors, member not found, and because this returns a function, I need to specify the member ID. If we get past this if statement, then our member is not null, and we can just return it from this method. So I'm going to say return member response. So this is how our implementation would look like using Dapper. Of course, if we leave it like this, it's not going to work because I didn't actually implement the SQL connection factory. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. I'm going to add it inside of the persistence project. So let's say SQL connection factory. We need to implement the iSQL connection factory interface. I'm going to inject the i configuration interface so that I can fetch the connection string from the application settings. So I'm going to say i configuration and let's inject that from the constructor. Now I just need to return a new SQL connection. So let's go ahead and do that. And I need to specify the connection string. I'm going to get that using the i configuration that I just injected. So I'm going to call the get connection string method and specify the name of the connection string, which is database in this case. A better implementation would be to implement the options pattern and define a class that is going to hold your strongly typed configuration, in this case, the connection string to the database, and inject that instead of hard coding it like this. Now that we have our SQL connection factory, I'm going to head over to our get member by ID query handler, and let's see how this is working now using Dapper. 
I'm going to send a get request to our API from Postman. As you can see, I'm getting the same response back from our API. So now let's see what is the performance using Dapper versus the previous implementation that was using Entity Framework Core. I'm just going to call the API a few times and we're going to see what is the response time that we are getting in this case. I think that we can conclude that Dapper is definitely faster, but it's not significantly faster than EF Core, especially since I'm using EF Core 7 in this application, which has a lot of performance improvements over the previous versions. I already see a few comments are going to say that I'm breaking the clean architecture by introducing SQL in the application layer. I completely agree that we are breaking the clean architecture in some shape or form. So what we can do here is instead of writing the SQL query inside of the application layer, we can define a simple abstraction that we can implement in either the infrastructure or the persistence layer. And that way you can keep your application layer clean from the dependency to Dapper. Remember to smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you didn't already. Take a look at these two videos that you can see on the screen right now. And until next time, stay awesome.